Microsoft has released many new enhancements and new features in New Outlook, and I'm going to share them with you today. Keep in mind, I like to test them before I share them with you. So I'm showing you what was released last month. Now, let's get started. Many users have asked if they can open up both versions of Outlook at the same time, and you can. I recommend that open up new Outlook, work in it. If you get stuck, then hop over to the classic version. And let me show you how to do that. I'm in Windows 11, by the way, and I'm going to actually, in the search bar, type in Outlook. Notice that you have two icons here. The one without the word new on it, this is the classic version. And again, with new, it is. Let's click on Outlook. Here is the classic version. Let's repeat that. And since I've already did the search on Outlook, let's click on new. And we have new Outlook open because I see the toggle here. I want to talk about favorites in new Outlook but I have received several questions about concerns, you know, accidentally saving an email in a wrong folder. And I wanna show you that in action. So I am actually in a Dale's account. And if I take this email, notice that I cannot add those in those folders because those are my primary account, the Teresa C account. And notice I can't add them. Once I get to Adele, it says one item. Now I can release it and it saved in Adele's folder. Now here are my thoughts. I wish the favorite folders were color coded. The second thing that came up is relating to favorites and the share with me folder. Let's go there. I'm in as Adele. Here is the share with me. It's really the share folders. So the question came up is, hey, I have a couple share folders and I'm looking at some of the um, folders within that share folder and I can't save it to the favorites. So if I right click on test again, I'm right clicking folks and nothing is happening. I do not get any options. If I right click on the inbox, I can create a subfolder just up under that inbox. I do not have an option to add it to the favorites and I can't even drop and drag this to the favorites as well. Microsoft is aware of it. They have shared that there's more enhancements coming when it comes to the share folders. I want to give you a heads up with the inbox and calendar sharing um, notifications. Microsoft has reported that starting in November 2023, that admins will have the ability to turn off the ability to share inbox folders and calendar folders. So if you're trying to share it with someone and you don't see the options, contact your admin center. And let me show you how this works. I am in Adele's mailbox and I'm going to right click on this folder and see the sharing and permissions. If I come in here and I decide I want to share this with Nestor, I click on this plus sign here and add in his name. Hit add. And I just start to set the permissions levels. You can go ahead and hit okay. That's how you can share your folder. I'm gonna just hit cancel. Quickly, I'm gonna show you how to um, share a calendar. Go to the calendar, click on the share calendar, select it and start to fill this in. I'm gonna add Nestor. I can look at what type of access I wanna give him. Let's say that I actually wanna give him, have him as the delicate of this calendar. And let's go ahead and hit share.
So I have given Nestor um, delicate access to my calendar. Microsoft has released an enhancement feature that's called Send Invitations and Responses to um, Delicate and Send Me a Copy or Delicate Only or both my, um, my Delicate and to me. Now, I'm not going to get into it in this video. Please watch this next video because there's um, um, several watch outs that I want to share with you, but you have that option. This is the preferred option based on Microsoft recommendation and you are okay. So we can close this. That's how you share a calendar um, real quick. <laughs> Sort by category is now available in New Outlook. Let me show you how you do that. If you click on filter, click on sort, choose category, and there you are. If you no longer want to sort by category, just repeat those steps and choose the date and you are all set. You can do the same thing in your custom folders as well. Next in the message list pane, in a previous video, I had shared um, a feature, the message height, and I have some clarifications for you. So if you remember, if you right click on any of these column headers and change the view, notice I have this message height options down here, but they grayed out. So what I discovered is, you have to make sure you turn the reading pane on. And let's do that. I'm gonna go here and turn on the reading pane. Now, if I right click, those options are available to you. So what do they do? The switch between single and multiple rows, if you have this option, and that is the default, by the way, notice what you see here. I like to say that this is the columns horizontal view so you you can see everything going horizontally if you change that feature to use multiple rows for messages watch what happens notice how everything is now listed vertically right and if you in your view tab and you say message preview and you show your preview you're going to see at least three rows here. If I turn off message preview and hide that, notice that I'm only seeing two rows with the exception of showing your categories. If you go into view settings, type in message height, same thing here. It is visible because the reading pane is turned on. If I would turn it off, these features are and are grayed out. Couple of features that has been added to the new message tab. Let's open up a new message. We now have the dictation feature with us in New Outlook. I can actually click on the drop down. Notice that you have several languages that you can choose from. These are readily available to you. Notice that in the preview versions that you have these languages available to you, that micro, but Microsoft did say that there might be some accuracy issues here. So you can give it a shot, but nevertheless, Microsoft is working on improving the dictations for these other languages. I have mine set to English and let's give it a try. Hello everyone, hope all is well. New line, is this feature, is Dictate smart enough to add a question mark at the end of the sentence? Question mark. I am gonna show you a list of all the commands for dictation. I will add this link in the description so you can have access to them. Notice here are the commands for punctuations in different symbols, currency, mathematics, 
And I was surprised with the emojis that is still showing the old output formats and not actually adding the emojis. It was brought to my attention that when you either drag an image into a new compose message, or if you paste an image, that it shows the entire image versus giving you the option to just show you the file type of the image. Let me show you what I mean here. So if I drag this image into here as an attachment, it's giving me the preview. The client wanted to be able to just to show the file type as if you were pasting a document. So if I paste this document as an attachment, Notice how I immediately get the option to say, do I want a link from um, OneDrive or do I want to attach this as a copy? And when I do that, this is what I'm referring to. It's actually showing the file type icon and the file name and not the actual image. I actually sent Microsoft the, um, the feedback, so hopefully that gets on the backlog as well. Let me know in the comments if you, you know, would like to see your images as an um, file type as well. Show decline events are now available in New Outlook. Adele has sent Teresa, which is an external client, a invite to a meeting and I wanted to show you the details of Adele's information and let's jump over to Teresa's calendar and decline it. Okay, so I am in Teresa's calendar. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and click on the RSVP and I'm going to send a note to the email organizer. I think that's nice, by the way, that they add that there because you're really clear on who you're sending the message to. You're not sending it to everyone, just to the email organizer. Okay, so let's go to Teresa's calendar, and there it is. So on December the 16th, I have declined that meeting, and notice that it is just marked as free. So I have this meeting open. I can actually say, don't remind me, that is the default. But let's say that you still want to get reminders, just in case if you are available, that you're reminded that that meeting is you know, happening. So that's your call. By popular demand, recall a message has finally made it to New Outlook. This email here, Adele is the sender. She's sending it to her internal colleague, Nestor, as well as to Teresa, who is external. Now, I'm going to walk you through the results, but I just want you to be aware that anytime you recall a message from internal, regardless if it was read or unread by the recipient, it will be deleted successfully. Now, if you actually send anything out externally, that it will not, you know, it would fail. As well as, let's say that Nestor forwarded the message to Alex before she recalled it, won't happen, right? So that one will be missed. So let's just walk through this. There's a couple of things you need to be aware of. If you right click on a message that you sent, you do not get the option to recall a message. You actually have to open the message and click on the more options, advanced actions, and choose recall message. That's one way. The second way is turning on the reading pane, clicking on the more options and advanced actions. So. Just be aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and recall this message. This message will delete it from all mailboxes of recipients. Now, I'm going to share this with you. We couldn't process this action. Please try again. This has happened to me a couple of times during my test. Now, and I do know that it did eventually work. I did inform Microsoft of this error message. So I'm going to try it again. 
type open it. Finally, um, I was able to recall this message. Notice it says recall attempt. It tells me the date and the time. You will also get a notification when you recall a message. Let's take a look at that as well. Notice who you're getting the um, notification from. Just click on view message report. So here is the report. So notice that it shows who the sender and who the recipients are. And I look down here, recall was successful for Nestor, who was internal. And again, for Teresa, who is external, it failed. And it tells you why it failed. Now, go work your magic.